the gateway. This right here is the case to my new gaming PC. I'm finally doing a new gaming PC build for my personal gaming, and I am super stoked. Of course, knowing me, I only go with the latest and the greatest hardware, so we've got the RTX 3090, we've got either the 11900K or the 10900K from Intel. I haven't actually decided which one we're going with because I haven't really finished any of my benchmarking due to some crazy issues I ran into when they first sent the samples. I've got a 1200 watt power supply from Be Quiet, and we have the case that it's all going in. I'm Evil's Vox, the stream professor, and if you know anything about my aesthetic or what I do here on the channel, you know that first part about only using the latest and greatest components was a lie. I will be aiming to put my RTX 3090 in this computer, but we might run into some issues that make that not realistic. The case we are going with is not of this era. This is a gateway this one's actually a gateway essential. It's a little bit more dinged up than I had originally anticipated, but we're doing a sleeper PC. This is the closest match I have been able to actually get my hands on to a PC case that matches my actual Windows 98 gateway PC that I have sitting over there that was families that I played on as a kid and have restored and been working on. That'll be its own video. It was manufactured in 1999. Manufacture date is October 28th, 1999. This is the LP Mini Tower TB3 Essential 450 was from Best Buy and costs a thousand dollars, a thousand and ten dollars, according to the sticker on here. It's quite the PC. <laughs> it's actually not as dusty as I expected. Now, if this is, this is not like the one that I have. The one that I have actually has a Voodoo 3 in it. This is not that. This is a Vision Tech NV996 or G7500. Honestly, not sure which. Oh, this is some old dust in here, though. Hmm. This is actually an NVIDIA Riva TNT2 chip on here. Interesting. And then the CPU actually exhausts out the power supply. Uh, that is how the ATX form factor was designed to run. And then you have hard drive cage up here, optical and floppy and all of that here. We're going to run into some challenges with this build, as you can imagine. I wanted specifically to do, I wanted to do this one back when I was at my apartment. I've been trying to do this for about two years now. I wanted one that would match my retro, you know, Windows 98 gaming rig that I would be able to just put right next to it so I could do CRT and modern gaming side by side. This is no longer how I have things to set up. And so, in fact, this will be going in my house, most likely. But this beat up, super sturdy case will actually be much more baby proof than our current setups are anyway. So we're gonna tear all of this out, but the problem we're gonna run into is airflow. Airflow being a major concern for modern computers, of course. There isn't really any in here. Computers weren't really designed with this in mind. There is a tiny bit of ventilation on the front, and then there's some cutouts on the side panel. But there's not even an intake fan. It is just purely some cutouts, and then the power supply fan is actually doing all of the heavy lifting, pulling airflow through the case, across the CPU cooler, across the power supply, and back out the back. Now there is what appears to be a 90 millimeter fan cutout here on the back. You can see here it's kind of blocked off with this panel, which I can remove, but that is only 90 millimeter, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit a 120 in here without issues. So 120 here, and maybe on the side if we can fit it around, we probably don't need the support bar. We'll probably take this out, but if we can fit a 120 exhaust here, and then I want to put a big uh, 140 in the front here, and that may be the best we can get. So I'm the reason I said we may not be able to fit the 3090 in here is this is not a stock 3090. This is the FTW3, which is a three fan design, and on top of clearance issues, it is not built to have this kind of airflow, whereas my stock RTX 3080 actually is. It has that specific airflow design, which is designed to take air up in the front and then exhaust it out the back towards the CPU. I am breathing in so much dust right now <coughs> oh, that it might be more optimal for this setup. But either way, this PC is going to run hot, so we do have to get creative. First, we're going to start by gutting this thing, figuring out what holes we might need to drill to really get some airflow going. My goal is to not have to drill up this beautiful front panel. In fact, I want to preserve it. I'm not sure how yet, but I want to, if I can't keep the optical drives in here, I want to at least keep the faceplate somehow so the facade up front is maintained. Too dusty. I'll take this outside when it's not raining. 
Oh. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna be honest with you all. I jumped in this project. This has been going on, well, most of the bulk of this work for this project was started back in the spring. I jumped into this project without any complete certainty that I would be able to make it work. But I wasn't certain that I would actually be able to fit the parts in it. It was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. So the first stage, of course, was disassembly, taking the whole case apart, stripping down all of the components, removing everything that wouldn't go in the new PC, and then trying to preserve as much of the outward facing elements as possible so that it still looked like a classic Windows 98 gateway. Mostly that went fine other than this being a very different build than the actual gateway that I have, which is a normal socketed CPU. This one is a slot CPU with the, you know, horizontal heatsink and stuff, and it actually screwed through the motherboard into the case. Thankfully, the standoffs and the screw mounts for that were not any taller than the normal motherboard standoffs, so they shouldn't be a problem. Now it's time for the motherboard test fit, and I'm really doubting whether or not this could work, so gonna see here. It actually fits better than the previous motherboard. <laughs> uh, so we are going to have to dremel out the I.O. shield area because this is baked into the system with this little foam padding. We're gonna have to dremel it out and hope it doesn't look too terrible and hope we don't get too many metal shavings everywhere especially for a tool that I've not really used before. Let's do it. But secondly what I immediately ran into was the I.O. shield had this cloth padding to it and was baked into the case. This was a big steel heavy case and the IO shield was just stamped in as part of the steel. It wasn't a removable faceplate kind of deal like we have with a lot of motherboards now. These days the IO shield either gets pushed into your case or it is pre-attached to the motherboard now. This one was pre-attached to the case since these are OEMs that are building their computer for one specific purpose. And that needed removed, or I literally can't fit any modern motherboard in it because it won't match the I.O. for the I.O. shield. So that's where things immediately started getting hairy. And this is technically not a Dremel. I don't think it's cutting through steel. Somehow that just doesn't feel realistic right now. We do have high speed cutters. All right, we're gonna do a test pass first and see if we even start cutting it. I get the feeling I don't have the right tool. I, I don't think it's gonna work, but we're gonna do a first pass and see what happens. can see light through it. <laughs> Yep, that's not gonna work. <laughs> I think I can call myself lucky with that one. I don't know why I was working before. Thanks. Better tools were needed.
honestly, I was really not confident in what I was doing here. <laughs> Never used the Dremel on anything. Already had metal bits flying in different places. It looked pretty cool when running through slow-mo, but I wasn't certain I would be able to get it done and still look pretty great without mingling the whole thing or cutting off a finger or something, but it eventually worked. Like, I'd already gotten the basis of the cuts done with my cheap rotary tool, and with the actual Dremel, it took a lot of work and a little bit of patience to actually get through everything, but the results turned out. I just got through to the last little bit and then pried the rest out. And then from there, I used the file or sandy bits to try to sand down the rough parts so that I didn't scratch up the motherboard I.O. shield or cut my fingers and make sure no one gets hurt. Uh, next up was the clean job. I used, you know, rubbing alcohol and cleaning pads and toothbrushes to clean out all the metal shavings and scrub off all the gunk from the previous owner, the marks, as best I could. Because I did, I, I did want it to look a little bit new, at least. You know, still a sleeper PC, but not one that has had gunk caked on it for 20 years. Then it was time to start putting the parts in and realize that, well, the 120mm AIO that I had saved, which was super old and probably not great anyway, uh, wouldn't fit with the GPU in there at all, nor would it fit with the holes in the front of the case. So the next step was to order a new AIO and start drilling more holes for airflow out of the front of the case. There wasn't enough here. As Gamers Nexus would say, we needed more holes. Always more holes. And then that was the bulk of the modifications done. It was time to start assembling and one thing I quickly ran into is the plug format for the front panel power button and hard drive indicator LEDs and all of that was different than the modern standard. And so I got kind of lucky in that this motherboard included a one of those little all-in-one blocks where you put all the front panel pins on them and then plug the block into the motherboard. So I actually just cut off the ends that existed for the case plugs and soldered them to the all-in-one little plug block. And then I could plug it in and the power button works and the LEDs work and it's actually pretty nice. <laughs> thing is a beast. beast. Next up, we had to manhandle this beast of a power supply. This is the Be Quiet 1200 watt. It comes in a super premium case. It really gives you like a premium product experience here with an actual usable box to keep all the cables organized afterwards. And they're all individually soft sleeved. It's really, really nice, but it's huge. So getting it mounted in there was a little difficult. I actually had to drill a separate hole for the power supply screw. Like the holes didn't line up to the normal power supply due to the bigger plug and stuff that it has compared to traditional power supplies. Uh, but once I got it in there... Oh my god, it closes! What?! No way! That's insane! <laughs> what?! Everything seemed to cable manage perfectly. It was kind of shocking. Like, once I actually had all the power supply cables run and everything where it needed to be, especially since this isn't like a work rig for me, I don't have capture cards or you know, any other extraneous components, just a couple NVMe SSDs, it actually looks really nice and neatly packaged in this case that you would otherwise think would look terrible. So then the final, final steps were to just put everything back together. I re carefully removed the front panel pieces from the second CD drive. I put the first one in there just to eat up the space and still look the same. But I took the front panel off of the second one and just kind of stuck it into place with some adhesive and it looks like it was just installed as it normally would, which is pretty cool. So naturally, next it was time to play some games. Booting up Splitgate, running at 1440p on max settings, we're averaging around 240 FPS. Now this is with a 240 FPS cap because I found, I don't know if it's CPU related, but on every machine I try, if I run it with the 360 FPS cap, it just gets pretty stuttery and doesn't hold it, whereas the 240 FPS cap seems to be a little bit more stable. So it averages around 240, but not a rock solid 240, uh, but still runs really, really well. Uh, Master Chief Collection, in, at least in Halo 3, we're averaging 445 FPS, which is just bonkers. Uh, it does drop to like 220s at the low points, which is completely fine. Like, that's insane performance. 
Battlefield 4 on Ultra. This is an older game, but it is absolutely gorgeous, and it's one of those that, while I don't want to play every match that way, I do want to crank it up to Ultra Max settings sometimes and just enjoy the visuals. And that averages around 80 FPS. On Medium, you can usually get a little bit higher. Apex Legends on Max settings averages between 140 and 180-ish FPS, which is pretty nice. Uh, it runs pretty smooth, perfectly fine for 144 hertz monitor. Rainbow Six Siege running in Vulcan averages around 348 FPS, which is amazing. Like, if you're if you're doing the eSport thing, and again, this is maxed out. This isn't even on, like, eSport settings. You got all the frames you possibly want there. Doom Eternal uh, running with ray tracing on. We're looking at 150 to 170 FPS on average, which was awesome. Runs super smooth. Obviously, more frames could be better, but frankly, it's fine, and it looks absolutely beautiful. And again, that's on Ultra Nightmare settings with no DLSS and with ray tracing on. Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> CSGO left uncapped and again on max settings just because uh, with the benchmark map ran about 464 FPS on average, reaching up to almost 700 FPS at max. <laughs> no, no deaths can be blamed on, on frame rate there. Warframe on the enhanced graphics and maxed out ran on an average of 344 FPS, which is nice. Team Fortress 2, which for whatever reason doesn't always run super well, but averaged around 178 FPS. So this thing can game. It can game with all the power you can possibly ima imagine. It could also, like, long term, the reason this thing is so overpowered is long term, I do plan on getting one either. I, I plan on either upgrading to a 1440p 240Hz monitor, uh, which I think would be great, or a 4K 120Hz monitor, and I haven't landed on which yet, and frankly at the moment I don't have the money for it, uh, but I plan on gaming on one of those, and this rig will be fairly well suited to doing just that. It is a beast. All of these benchmarks were recorded on Windows 11, by the way. I've actually been running Windows 11 on this PC its entire time. It's never really even run 10, which is pretty neat. It's actually been running pretty nicely. Just to recap final specs here, we are looking at the Intel Core i9-10900K, uh, I really didn't want the heat issues of the 11900K, and from what I could tell, there would be no real advantage in terms of performance with going with it through my testing back and forth of the new chips versus the old one. The 10900K seemed to be the best one to go with, although now we have Alder Lake coming up, so you know, there's that. Then we have 16 gigs of 3600 megahertz RAM, which if I were doing more like video editing and stuff on this rig, I would potentially go higher, but... 16 gigs is fine for just gaming for right now. And then, of course, we do have the EVGA FTW uh, RTX 3090. Now, I will say, you, you notice how cramped and how not airflow handy the whole rig was. It runs hot. The GPU is anywhere from 75 to 90 C while it's running. The fans kick up. It gets pretty loud. Now, it is quieter than that uh, MSI laptop we, re we reviewed. So, like, it's not a jet engine. It's much quieter than even the laptop that we reviewed. And it has, we have the EK AIO 120 millimeter at the front. That's taking in cool air and cooling the CPU right away. So that's nice. And the GPU actually gets to pull in some nice cool air. I can even put my hand down and feel it from the side panel. And I've tested just with the side panel removed and it doesn't make much of a difference. But the biggest issue is that there isn't a whole lot of exhaust. You have the PSU, which I have mounted with the fan facing down. So it pulls air out of the case and exhausts it, which is how the ATX spec was actually designed to be run, which is how the Windows 98 PC ran. And then I put a knock to a fan as the exhaust to kick as much air out as possible. But there isn't a ton of exhaust. So some of that heat kind of sits there and soaks, which isn't ideal. I'm going to put off playing New World for now until that gets sorted, but otherwise, like, it runs hot, but I don't think it's anything to be concerned with. Like, if you're, if you're optimizing for temperatures and stuff, sure, you, you might want it to run a little cooler, but this isn't too far out of what the components are designed for, and the fans do kick up and cool it appropriately, as it's supposed to, and I could probably fine-tune fan curves a little bit more from here to kind of preemptively cool it a little bit faster as well. The CPU doesn't throttle too much as far as I've been able to tell, like it doesn't really throttle at all, so it's running fine, and I get the iGPU as well, which I could use for video encoding tasks and things like that, should I see fit. Learning about your gear is great, but what if you want to keep learning? What if you want to take it further? I struggle with something that many other education creators struggle with when it comes to YouTube's algorithms and releasing longer, more informative videos or extraneous content. To get past those issues, I've partnered with my creator friends to build our own video site. The site is called Nebula, and we've partnered with CuriosityStream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators such as MKBHD, 
Thomas Frank, low spec gamer, love that dude. Curiosity Stream saw what we were doing for educational content and wanted to partner up. We've worked out a deal where if you sign up with the link below, you not only get access to Curiosity Stream and their library of thousands of educational and documentary content, but you also get access to our streaming site, Nebula, for free for the entire duration of your subscription to Curiosity Stream. That means you get all of the amazing content on Curiosity Stream, but you also get my videos that are higher quality, ad free, and often extended from the YouTube version, like this very video you're watching now, as well as that from all of the top education creators that are on Nebula as well. For a limited time, Curiosity Stream is offering a 26% off promotion off of their annual plan, making it less than $15 per year for both Curiosity Stream and Nebula. While you're there, check out Beyond the Spotlight and a Curiosity Stream original series that provides a lot of insight into the rise to fame of many people, including YouTube's own Mr. Beast. Head to curiositystream.com slash epos for the best deal in streaming and get access to both sites for under $15 per year. It's bonkers. You don't want to miss it. So all in all, this has been an incredible rig for gaming. It is super freaking powerful, all put in this tiny little chassis that I'm now going to go put into my house where my kid can beat up and me not worry about marking up or looking bad or, you know, whatever, or anyone really thinking to steal it. And like I said, long-term plans, I plan on looking into a 4K120 or 1440p 240Hz monitor to pair with it. This has been a, quite the adventure. Like I said, it, it, it was something I worked on off and on behind the scenes throughout all of spring, and then it, I've just kind of been using it over the summer. Everything's running great. Been having a pretty good time with it. I'd say if you're looking to do a sleeper PC for yourself, I would definitely look for a case that has a bit more natural airflow as I had to do a lot of drilling, cramping my hand to get those holes in there, and it still doesn't have a ton. Uh, but I was, again, after a very specific case that I wanted to match my own Windows 98 case. So it's kind of up in the air. I think I really lucked out though. Like I've seen some that people picked up and even some that I had looked at that were designed for much smaller form factor builds and everything else. And mine seemed to really, I, I really lucked out with it fitting the ATX motherboard and power supply and everything just fits so perfectly nicely and neatly. Like I don't think I've ever built a computer that's as tidy and like organized as this one was. And I'm super stoked for that. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure. It's been pretty wild. As I mentioned, the full length version will be up on Nebula because this was probably a very, very long video uncut. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. Join us on Discord for, at discord.gg slash Vox for more chatting and talking about this kind of rig and things like that. And I'll catch you in the next one. Remember, be kind, rewind.